All right, welcome back to Road Trivia, the once a day road trip trivia quiz. Today, episode number 978, we're in part 23 of the final 50 challenge. This is the viewer submitted trivia quiz challenge. Today's quiz was submitted by John. John is from Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. He sent in a 21 question trivia quiz. We've got 20 questions up front. Question 21 tiebreaker at the very end of the video if you need to stick around for that. Thank you for playing and good luck. Question number one. What German composer and musician of the late Baroque period wrote the Brandenburg Concertos, which consisted of six instrumental pieces as a tribute to the Duke of Brandenburg, a man named Christian Ludwig? That German composer was Johann Sebastian Bach. Question number two, what Major League Baseball team won 116 games, which still stands as a record for the National League, while losing only 36 games in 1906, but fell to the Chicago White Sox four games to two in the World Series? That World Series was the crosstown rival World Series. That was the Chicago Cubs. Question number three. A Reuben sandwich classically contains corned beef, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, Thousand Island, or Russian dressing, and is usually grilled or toasted until the meat is warm and the cheese is melted. On what type of bread? Traditionally, a Reuben is on rye bread. Question number four. The great American Henry Ford wanted the Model T to be affordable, simple to operate, and durable. So he produced them with how many cylinders in the engine that came off the assembly line in 1908? The Model T was a reliable four-cylinder. Question number five. In 1963, this American Football League team moved from Dallas to Kansas City because it proved futile to compete with the National Football League Dallas Cowboys and they became the Chiefs. What name did they go by when they were in Dallas? Before they were the Kansas City Chiefs, they were the Dallas Texans. Question number six. What man was a very popular senator from the state of Arizona, but he didn't have much luck when he ran for president in 1964 and received only 52 electoral votes, losing handily to Lyndon Johnson? That popular senator's name was Barry Goldwater. Question number seven. The original Star Trek pilot episode, The Cage, starred a different actor as captain of the Enterprise. William Shatner would go on to star as Captain James T. Kirk, but who starred as Captain Christopher Pike, who tragically died in 1969 at only the age of 42? His name was Jeffrey Hunter. Question number eight. In the early 70s, this soda started slowly becoming available after initially testing in Waco, Texas in 1972. Coca-Cola Corporation originally called this drink Peppo, but as expected, Dr. Pepper sued them. So they changed the name to what formal title?
Then they called it Mr. Pib. Question number nine. On January 27th, 1967, a fire started in Apollo 1 killing three astronauts, Edward H. White and the rookie Roger Chafee, along with which one of the seven original Mercury astronauts, whose name is used in homage by actor William Peterson on the television series CSI. His name was Gil Grissom. Question number 10. What hard rock band formed in 1968 in London, England with guitarist Jimmy Page and was initially called the New Yardbirds, but would crank out hits such as Whole Lot of Love and Stairway to Heaven under a name that was far from a moniker of success. They were told their career would go down like a Led Zeppelin, so that's what they named their band. Question number 11. In 1982, Great Britain went to war, although war was never officially declared, over the Falkland Islands with what South American nation that invaded and occupied the small islands in April of that same year? They went to unofficial war with Argentina. Question number 12. This musician, who had formed the group Wham! with fellow Brit Andrew Ridgely in 1981 and ended the group in 1986, embarked on a solo career in 1988, and his album Faith was the number one selling album of that year. What was his name? The answer is George Michael. Question number 13. The Columbia River, which is over 1,200 miles long, begins in the Rocky Mountains of Canada and then enters the United States in Washington and finally flows into what body of water in Astoria, Oregon? In Astoria, it flows into the Pacific Ocean. Question 14. Name the Brazilian woman who was the first to be both UFC women's bantamweight and featherweight champion, holds a professional MMA record of 22 wins and 5 losses, and defeated Julia Pena in July of 2022 to regain the bantamweight title. Her name was Amanda Nunez. Question 15. Formerly the host of E! Network's The Soup from 2004 to 2015, who played Jeff Winger, a quick-witted ex-lawyer forced to attend Greendale Community College because he never earned his degree on the NBC sitcom Community from 2009 to 2015? His name was Joel McHale, is Joel McHale. Question number 16, although grenadine or grenadine syrup may contain lemon juice or high fructose corn syrup, what juicy round red fruit that comes from a deciduous shrub was originally and still often used to make it? Traditionally, grenadine is made from a pomegranate. Question 17. On Sesame Street, Ernie, who lived with his rather stodgy friend Bert, would sing this catchy song while having a bath while covered in soap bubbles. 
What was the name of this song that became popular enough from the show to peak at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1970? I remember singing this song as a kid. The song's title is Rubber Ducky. Question number 18. In the original 1960 Game of Life by Milton Bradley, you can choose to be a teacher, journalist, or lawyer, among other professions. But what is the highest paying job, topping out at a whopping $20,000 a year salary? That job is the job of a doctor. Question number 19. What Scottish philosopher, who was also a physician and a major thinker of the Enlightenment, gave us the social contract theory that says, government was created through the consent of the people to be ruled by the majority? The answer is John Locke. And question 20, Super Bowl three MVP Joe Namath threw how many fourth quarter passes as he led the New York Jets to a 16-7 upset victory over the Baltimore Colts on January 12, 1969 at the Orange Bowl Stadium in Miami, Florida. How many fourth quarter passes did Joe Namath throw in Super Bowl three? Closest number gets it. He threw zero passes. All right, that is it for today. Thank you to John from Pennsylvania for sending in 21 excellent questions. Thank you everybody else who came to watch. Hopefully you enjoyed today's quiz. I know I'm really liking these quizzes. I think you guys are all doing an excellent job. I love playing trivia that I don't immediately know the answers to. The only problem with having the trivia channel is when I write the questions, I already know the answers. So I started this channel because I enjoy playing trivia, but it's weird because then once you start writing it, then you never actually get to play it. So when you guys send me these questions, I get to read through them and actually do a little bit of road trivia from the other side of the table, which I really enjoy. I love these quizzes. I'm sad that there's only 22 left after tomorrow, but maybe we'll do a, a, another competition like this sometime in the future. I know it says the final 50. The original plan was for the final 50 to actually be the last 50 quizzes on this channel, but I've decided to continue on past episode number 1000. I'm having too much fun and there's too many people that seem like they'll be very angry at me if I stop doing these quizzes. So we're going to keep doing them. I enjoy doing them and as long as I know you guys are enjoying playing them, I will keep at it. So if you do enjoy playing these and you're not already subscribed, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Every time you give one of these videos a thumbs up or give me some helpful criticism in the comments or just a nice hello, any comment or thumbs up, anything like that. Looks good on the channel. YouTube likes it, I like it. So feel free to put a thumbs up on this one. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Here is question 21, the tiebreaker from John for part 33, sorry, part 23 of the final 50 challenge. Who ran three times for president, losing all three times as the nominee for the Democrat Party, but who was known for his civil service being a United States representative from Nebraska and the Secretary of State under Woodrow Wilson? What was the name of this man who ran for president three times, losing all three times? His name was William Jennings Bryan. All right.
right, that is it for today. See you tomorrow for episode number 979.